Hello. Hello, Ali. Hi, Amadou. How are you? Fine. Good, you. Fine. Yeah, good Thank morning, you. Amadou. Good morning. Garo, ça va? How are you? Yeah, fine. Okay. I, I didn't see you yesterday. Good morning. No, I was, I was, I was there. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I was sitting behind. Ah, okay. Following. <laughs> Waiting for my sessions. <laughs> I see. Since I'm going to sit the whole day today and tomorrow, basically. Yes, like I see that you are sharing today. Yeah. We are online. Oh, okay. So, uh, good morning again. Uh, welcome again to the second day of our. Uh, a virtual conference. I welcome everybody. So we have basically today also in the morning uh, six talks. Each talk will be 20 minutes presentation and five minutes interaction as what we did yesterday. So we will start with uh, the first presenter today, Stephanie uh, Kenmo. Please, uh, Stephanie Kemo, share your screen and the floor is for you. Okay, good. So, by the way, uh, my name is Stefan Kenmoy. So, you should not read the E like <laughs> the E in English. So, today I want to report on what we are doing here at the University of Duisburg Essen. So, uh, so uh, we are part of a collaborative project uh, which is uh, devoted to alcohol oxidation using heterogeneous catalysis. And then our contribution to this project is to study the impact of solvation on the structure and reactivity of the various oxide structures that we are going to use in the project. So we are among the few theoretical groups which are working with a zoo of exper experimentalists using uh, various background and techniques to address the topic. So, uh, Okay, so as I just said, uh, we are doing heterogeneous catalysis in the liquid phase because uh, this uh, topic is important because as we know, uh, most of the chemicals in the industry, in the chemical industry are produced via oxidation. And around more than 500 million tons of chemicals are produced through oxidation uh, every year in the world. As we know already, large-scale industrial oxidation in the gas phase is well established. Many people have addressed oxidation using, for example, metals theoretically and experimentally. Speaking about theory, we know people like uh, Angelos Michaelidis who have studied uh, metals interaction with water to a very extent, um, big extent, and other people here in Germany and uh, all over the world. So. Uh, Selective oxidation is also an important process because it allows to functionalize hydrocarbon and many other raw materials. So we want to bring oxidation, uh, heterogeneous oxidation um, catalysis in the liquid phase to a level of understanding that can be equivalent to what is already known on metals. Because in our studies, in our project, we focused on oxides because as we know, um, oxides are more abundant uh, apart from few noble metals. Most of the metals uh, forms oxide as soon as they are exposed to the atmosphere. And as we know in operando condition, water is always there. So it's important to know how water interferes with the chemical processes that we want to address. And as I said already in the first slide, here in, it's a collaborative project, it's a national project in Germany. And then one of the professors here in the university got a big grant uh, where he uh, wanted to address the topic I've been mentioning since the beginning. And then uh, we were, um, uh, 
we, we, we saw the importance of theory because in the first funding period, uh, I think the project was not accepted because there was a few theory in the, in the application. So this is how my boss here was contacted and then we applied for a second round and then it got accepted. As you can see theories in the center of the project. Uh, I'm just telling all this because uh, in Africa, sometimes we think that theory is not important, but uh, theory is uh, reaching a level um, people are already kind of doing uh, to a certain extent experimental, ex I mean, experiment, computer experiment using various codes like CP2K or many others. So uh, uh, concretely, what you want to do is to uh, study the nature of the catalyst, the catalyst that we are going to use. Uh, namely, we want to study the, the nature of the active sites, the reaction mechanism, and also uh, focus on particular oxides that give the best uh, structure to activity uh, relation. So uh, uh, precisely we in the project uh, focus on abundant oxide in, on earth. So in earth, sorry, uh, like cobalt and iron oxides. So in the first step of the project, we started with cobalt oxide because cobalt oxide uh, has many beneficial properties, uh, magnetic, electronic, and redox property that makes it a potential candidate for many uh, reaction, catalytical reaction like water oxidation, uh, selective uh, propanol, isopropanol oxidation, steam, the forming of ethanol, uh, carbon monoxide oxidation, and so on and so forth. So, so cobalt oxide nanoparticles that are used for catalysis uh, have this shape. And uh, you see on this shape, uh, three phases are mainly exposed. There's a 101, 111, and 110. And then depending on the application that you want to use, uh, people have developed over the year, uh, in, I mean, in many experimental groups, people have developed technique to allow a selective exposure, right, of uh, the facets that are more active for particular catalytical reactions. And then, uh, the the one one the one zero zero surface, as you can see, is a very abundant on a, it's very prominent on nanoparticles. So this is why we have decided to study this surface orientation. It's first it's interaction with water, and in the later stage, uh, the oxidation of selected alcohol, namely isopropanol. And we started first by studying water because, as you know, water can promote a metastable reaction by stabilize, stabilizing intermediates or water can also inhibit reactions by blocking the active site. So how do we do it? So we do a com computer experiment. Uh, this is the procedure that we follow. So we take the bulk, we cut in particular orientations. And then when you do it for cobalt oxide, you end up, uh, if you cut cobalt oxide on, in, uh, according to the uh, 100 orientation, you end up with two terminations which are known as the A and B termination. The A is terminated by cobalt two plus atoms. And then the B termination is terminated by a mixture of oxygen and cobalt three plus. So you have cobalt with two different oxidation states, which are two and three. And then what do we do? We use a, what we call a supercell approach in which we put the slabs, so the surfaces. In principle, surfaces are, a surface is not an entity at its own. A surface is always connected to the bulk. So here, when we simulate the surface, we fix some part of our slabs to bulk position to mimic the bulk. And then the upper part of the slab is allowed to relax uh, for the clean surface and also later with water. So as you see my pointer here, this part here is allowed to relax in here is keep fixed at bulk position to mimic the bulk, the bulk behavior. So, and then we add water on top and then see what happens. So we, uh, we uh, do it at several levels of uh, solvation. So first one layer of water, two layers, three layers, and then uh, we go towards, we converge towards bulk water. And then here, the dimension of the cells that we use are typically in the nano regime. So it's basically 1.5 nanometer square on top of which we put water. So I will skip you from the details here. So maybe if one is interested, we talk about it uh, during the discussion. So, and then we address a specific scientific question. First of all, what is the structural, structural response of the interface to water absorption? Where and how does water absorb on the surface? What is the degree of dissociation? Because as we know, uh, surface OH are very decisive when it comes to catalytic reaction. What's the driving force for 
the stabilization of water at the interface, what is the nature of, of the fundamental interaction that stabilized absorbed water, what about the hydrogen bond network and the topological reorganization, because as we know, uh, the smoother you have the hydrogen bond network, sometimes the better is for proton transport, which is, uh, can be another, another uh, pathway for hydrogen evolution for people who do, for example, water splitting. And then at the end, uh, after we know how the substrate or the catalyst reacts towards water, then we put uh, the selected alcohol that we want and then see the effect of, the effect of temperature and environment on the uh, oxidation. That is uh, oxidation, you can understand this as the, the, the loss of hydrogen from the alcohol to create a ketone, for example. So in the case of propanol, you can have uh, acetone. So direct to the first question. So uh, what happens when you have water at the interface? So first we uh, address the clean surface and then you see uh, the A and the B surface. This is before relaxation. And then you see that in the case of, case of A, you see these arrows. So the cobalt two plus, which are green, they move uh, towards the row, uh, towards the fourfold, along the row towards the fourfold holocyte that are located here, as you see my pointer. So there is a, a construction on the A termination. And uh, uh, as you can see here, you have no reconstruction on the B termination. So you have small uh, relaxation, so a small magnitude of, of, uh, is of relaxation. So they are actually ongoing experiment in a group in Freestyle Institute in Berlin, where they are doing uh, STM measurements to try to uh, corroborate what we see from theory. And then what happens when we put water? So for the moment, I won't show the water, I won't show the water molecules, sorry. I will just show you this small um, characteristic Raja distribution function. So as theoreticians, to see what is happening, what water is there, the movie is not important, but the physical property. So we calculated the distance between cobalt atom at the topmost layer at the surface and surface uh, oxygens also. And then you see uh, in the case of the A termination, so we add gradually 16 water molecules, that is one layer, 24, this is two, and then uh, 32, which is three water monolayers on the surface. And then you see that uh, in the case of the A, this is, for example, the radial distribution in the bulk, you see a kind of, uh, I will say, not, allow me to call it narrow peak. So uh, where you have a fixed, uh, a fixed peak here, uh, which is not white as when you uh, the surface is relaxing and undergoes con construction because you see uh, on this line here that you have the oh, come on sorry so the peak is uh, actually um, uh, widened because there is the reconstruction going on on the on the clean surface and then the more you add water you add 16 24 and then uh, you go to 32, you see, uh, we go, you go back towards a bulk-like distribution at the, at the interface, uh, which is sort of say that waters favors kind of bulk-like uh, environment. So, and then uh, you see that the peaks do not have, uh, the eights of the peak do not, have, do, do not have a significant dependence on the water content. So on the cobalt tree, atoms which are also present on the A termination, but on a lower sub layer, uh, you see similar feature concerning the, the, the relaxation on the A on the B. They are less pronounced relaxation of cobalt three atoms. And we uh, actually try to understand what is going on, what's the driving force for this behavior. And then we perform a thorough analysis that I won't show here. And then we came out with the conclusion that the driving force for this stabilization is the coordination number at the interface. So everybody wants to get his coordination number that he had in the bulk. So now, what is the structure of the interface? Where is what? What do we see? How does water is there? So that's, for example, a snapshot top view of uh, A and B termination with 16 water layers. So one monolayer. As you can see, you have intact water layers like here. And then also dissociated water. You can see the hydroxyl groups. So this is uh, so the absorption mode is the same is the same on the A and B terminations. Just that on the A you have more dissociation, you have more 
OH groups compared to the B, where uh, molecular water is more prominent. And then uh, 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 what, what happens when you, the more you, you add water? So how does the dissociation degree in the contact layer depends from water? We have seen that uh, the dissociation degree actually does not strongly depends on the water coverage because the dissociation degree is uh, almost 100% on cobalt two plus and 50% on cobalt three plus on the A termination. And then even if you add, increase the solvation degree, it's still the same. When you go on the B, as I said before, there is less, less dissociation, which is actually almost one quarter of water dissociating, and which is also not dependent on the water content. And then we, concerning uh, talking about the structure, we also try to 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 see um, what is the I mean the 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 how 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 do the, the the layers looks at the interface and then we come out with the conclusion that you have actually buckled layer on the A as you can see here and the buckling is more very important on the A termination compared to the B where layers are almost flat and this you can see it from this characteristic uh, density profile along the z direction that we calculated so this uh, peaks actually at one uh, uh, is attributed to hydrogen bonds that dissociate and go to oxygen on the surface, which are located almost at one, uh, one Armstrong away. This is the characteristic distance for an OH group on the surface. And then you have other peaks here at two with actually the, the water oxygens. And then you have uh, broadening and peaks that are hybridizing somewhere here when water uh, become more and more water content become more and more important at the surface. On the B, as I said, the structure is a bit more ordered. And then the experimentalists now are also doing some STM images for comparison here. And then they are also doing some, another group is doing some XPS uh, chemical, uh, XPS measurement to see the chemical state of water. So to confirm that water is really actually partly dissociated and the interface. So they actually they do it by calculating yeah. The Sorry, Stefan, you have five minutes. Oh, zero, one S electrons. So they can also do uh, ambient pressure XPS uh, experiment to determine the thickness of water at the interface. So that brings me directly to the next point where we have calculated the, uh, the radial distribution function of a cobalt atom to oxygen to, to I mean, to to investigate the strength of interfacial bonds at the surface. And then you see these peaks are two are characteristics for covalent bonds, uh, cobalt to oxygen bonds at the surface. You see some peaks are two, which are attributed to molecular water and some other ones are 1.89, which is actually hydroxyls on the group. So the features are almost the same for the A and the B. And then we also address the lateral distribution of uh, species at the, at the interface. And then you can see, I will just show for the B, you see that uh, this is, for example, water on the gray here, water spots. So we calculate the XY distribution of spots during molecular dynamic simulation that we did. And then you see that you have rigid oxygen layers, as you can see with the grays. And then which shows that actually on the B termination, water forms epitactic layers on the surface. Also, we studied the the hydrogen bond distribution, and then we calculated the orientation of OH vectors with respect to the surface normal. And then you can see from these distributions that uh, the more water is there, you have a growing H bonds and more deviation to the surface normal. So we and experimentalists together are calculating the shift, actually the red, the red shift in OH frequencies to see, to have a quantitative, um, uh, um, I mean, um, quantitative information about uh, what is happening. So these effects are more pronounced on the E, on the A termination concerning this uh, strengthening of the hydrogen bond network. So that brings me to the last slide of my talk. So at this stage, we have seen that water, actually we have information about the state of water, the interface, which is actually partially dissociated on both terminations. We have rigid oxygen layers, uh, but I didn't show the proton subsystem because the time is too short. And I showed in the previous slides, we have the construction on the A, which is driven by, uh, um, uh, the, this reconstruction is lifted up 
uh, when water is present, and this is due to the increase in the condensation number. We have broken layer, the dissociation degree, if we summarize, is actually 75% with full dissociation on cobalt 2 plus and 50 and uh, on cobalt 3 plus. So we have a dynamic interface. I didn't show anything about dynamics here. No reconstruction on the B epitactic layers, 25% dissociation, and then the proton transfer uh, mechanism is less reactive. And then this, this uh, conclusion brought us to the, so we asked ourselves, is it because of the fact that water is tight, water OH are tightly bound to cobalt two plus on the A that we have high temperature desorption peaks. Maybe this is the case because in experiment, they see it. Maybe we have, this is the first step to the explanation of that. And then maybe the B termination could be, I mean, more favorable to large molecule absorption and decomposition. Maybe the cobalt three plus are actually the active sites. And then to end up, I will just show this movie. This is, for example, uh, now we have introduced an alcohol, at, I, I, um, isopropanol. And then as you can see uh, here, when you put it, put this, because on the A, we have seen nothing. The A is not reactive because water is tightly bound. The OH bonds are stubborn, not easy to dissolve or to collaborate with uh, other ones to allow the proton transfer. So on the B, this is what is happening. Also, nothing is happening. But as soon as we play with environment, and then and by actually, uh, I mean, creating some defects, you have something happening interesting. So you have the decomposition of isopropanol to acetone. You see that hydrogen is transferred from the, um, from the isopropanol to the neighboring oxygen molecules, which is actually our target in this but now we have to do it a long scale for a longer uh, simulation time. And also at the later stage, we are going to go, we are going to move towards real structure. So I mean, making the thing more real, right? By going really to electrochemical environment, extra proton hydroxide, and also a real surface composition by allowing metal doping and vacancies. So I'm done. This is what I wanted to present today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Stefan. So we have five minutes to interact. Uh, you can actually unmute yourself and ask a question. But in the meantime, Stefan, there is some uh, questions on the chat. Yeah. Uh, let me just read them. Have you done DFT calculation on water absorption on your on your surface with different terminations to determine the for favorable configuration before doing MD? Yes, that's actually uh, a, a good question. So we, we didn't do any thermodynamic analysis to see which surface termination is the best. So actually one could do up initial uh, thermodynamic and then to see in equilibrium condition, which one is more stable. But then there are two problems. One is technical. So uh, calculating surface energy and uh, you, uh, I mean, the phase space of water uh, at ambient temperature is not so trivial to handle when you calculate the surface energies. And then secondly, there's no experimental group uh, working in uh, equilibrium conditions. So this is why we directly study the two of them, A and B. Yeah, and then, <laughs> so that's what I can say at this stage. Okay, in line, uh, Azima, let me just uh, read this one and then you will, you will uh, ask your question. So in line with that, someone also asking, why do you make some layers fixed during, during relaxation? Yeah, because as I said, a surface is not an entity at its own, right? A surface is always connected to the bulk, right? The surface is something different. It's not something different from bulk. They, they are always connected. So this is why to mimic this uh, picture, what we do is that we take the bulk, we cut in particular direction, and then we keep some layers fixed to mimic this part of the bulk, which is still under the uh, relaxed layer. So, I mean, this is the, the basic, this is the basic trick that we do in surface science, right? To study surfaces. And then, and then, and then, and then the physical properties are really, really depending on the amount or the slab thickness that you use and so on and so forth. Perfect. So Azima, you can you can ask your question. Okay. So uh, my question is that uh, your the surfaces you considered. Did you consider uh, symmetric surfaces? 
uh, because usually you have uh, dipole interactions of um, adjacent faces if the surfaces are not symmetric. Yeah. And if you didn't, did you uh, consider adding some dipole interaction corrections in your calculations? Yeah, that, that's a very nice question. Actually, I skipped it because I knew <laughs> any expert would ask me. So actually what <laughs> we do, you see uh, this, if, if you are not careful, we, are, we actually use symmetric surface. You see the terminations are the same. The A, uh, yeah is ended by cobalt two plus on both sides. This is yes. to, and then we put enough vacuum. And then on top of that, we put dipole correction. Why do we put yeah. dipole correction? Because we see the fact that there's an asymmetric, there's an asymmetry that is created by the fact that you fix some layers at the bottom. When you fix mm -hmm. some layer, other ones are moving, then this asymmetry is handled also by putting this dipole correction. So okay. uh, thank you for the question. We didn't want to go to polar surfaces. Okay, so, uh, so I have a follow up question. So uh, in fixing uh, some of the um, uh, layers, did you also fix the uh, final tempted surface? Or uh, you, you allowed the symmetric parts to relax? In your relaxation? Oh, no, no, uh, okay, okay, okay. So this is, uh, this is, uh, 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 I mean, okay, we didn't relax both part of the, so, so the top of the end, no, we didn't do it because this technique is, I think is more computational demanding because if you do it you need a, I mean you need a considerable amount of bulk in the middle and then for this you have to go to very large slabs to avoid it we do only one side absorption and then play with the dipole correction oh okay okay all right uh, thank you uh, we will continue all these dis uh, discussions in actually in our discussion time uh, let's let's move 